Hey, welcome back North Shore Church Jam boys and girls, moms and dads, and even some grandmas and grandpas, at least from what I hear. <laughs> I wonder if some of you were doing the twist with the North Shore Jam Grand Youngins. Try to say that three times fast, or even once if you're me. Anyway, I'm Miss June. And I'm Miss Lynn. This is the fourth <laughs> week that we have come together online to share God's Word with our friends and families, and even some folks we don't know yet. Maybe this will be a way to bring some new folks into North Shore when the, this whole virus thing is over. We look forward to seeing y'all. Miss June, last week we started something that I think was pretty important. You mentioned last week that we usually take time in church for all the kids to speak to God in prayer. When we started having online services, we sort of forgot about that. Yeah. Finally, last week, we realized our mistake, so we've started leaving a moment for the kids and the parents to pause their computers and have prayer right there at their houses. I, I think that worked pretty well. Are we going to do it again? Absolutely. Great. Great. We will pray together, then stop for a moment, and then everyone at home can hit pause and pray. When they're done, they can hit play, and we will continue right back where we started. Sounds good, Miss Lynn. Um, would you say our prayer for us? Sure. Okay. Let's all bow our heads, fold our hands, and close our eyes for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you've provided a way for us to be together while we're apart. Thank you that Jesus is the same always, whether we're in a building or whether we're in our homes. Wherever we are, we know, Lord, you are with us, and you never leave us for a moment. Thank you for this time together today, that we can think about your love for us, your care, and how you want to help us in every area of our lives. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, let's pause, and we're going to take a moment for you to pray, too. Thanks, Miss Lynn. I love to invite Jesus here with us when we have children's church by praying to him. Today, it's especially important because the song we're going to sing is one of the kids' favorites. It's all about how much Jesus loves us, even when we don't deserve it. It's a song called Reckless Love. Oh, I love that song. Me too, Miss Lynn. You know, there's a kind of a funny story about that. I didn't always like that song. As most of you know, I drive the big blue bus here at North Shore Church, and we love music. I remember this song, Reckless Love, kept coming on the radio, and I just didn't like it. You know, I'm pretty old, and my ears don't work very well, so I couldn't understand the words. And I thought it was just this annoying song. It's just boom, 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 boom. I just didn't like it. I couldn't understand why everyone would join in and sing along with this boring song. Until finally... Somebody on Facebook posted this guy who wrote it, Corey Asbury, telling what the song meant. Bam! Suddenly I saw the words and realized why everybody loved it. Guess what? It's one of my favorites, <laughs> too, now. I love that song, too. You know, it reminds me of a Bible story. That if you haven't heard it, the song won't mean as much to you. It's the story of a shepherd who had a hundred sheep and lost one. They call it the parable of the lost sheep. Ooh, why don't you tell us about it, Miss Lynn? I'm going to go get my Bible. Okay. We can read it right from God's Word, the Bible. Tax collectors and other notorious sinners often came to listen to Jesus teach. This made the Pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he was associating with such sinful people, even eating with them. Some Pharisees saw him. The Pharisees believed that good men should not talk to sinners. They thought that Jesus was not a good man because he was talking to sinners. Jesus wanted to help the Pharisees understand why he was with the sinners. 
he told them the parable about the lost sheep. So Jesus told them this story. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go to search for the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. When he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors saying, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. When you look at this picture, you see some people who look like they are people from today. But they are in the same position of a famous picture of Jesus and his disciples. If you look at this picture, you see a lot of people who don't exactly look like church people. But Jesus doesn't care what they look like. He loves everyone, and he would look for any of them or us, just like he looked for that lost lamb. You know, there is a scripture verse that goes right with what we've been reading from the Bible, and it's not in the New Testament like this scripture that you've been looking at was. It's in the Old Testament. In fact, it's in a prophet's book, Ezekiel. Ezekiel 34, 11. The whole Bible goes together. And when you listen to this verse, you'll see. The verse says, For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them just like the New Testament scripture. You see, God is the same everywhere. Let's learn that verse today and remember what it has to say for us. Say it with me. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. Ezekiel 34, 11. Now, let's try it with some motion so we won't forget. Miss Lynn, Miss Lynn, Miss Lynn, I, I'm so sorry. I, I, I was going to try to make a song and it wouldn't work. I, I don't know. I, I was looking at all the different songs like I did with the other ones, but I couldn't think of a yeah. song, so I don't know how to do this one. I'm yeah. so sorry. It's hard to come up with a different song it every is, time. It is. I'm not, but I'm, I have some motions that I think would make it fun. And uh, I have a way of doing it that I think the kids will like. Okay, so okay. Let me teach it to you. Okay. Oh, you ready? I have to learn it too, huh? Yeah. You uh, can do this. We'll do it. We'll do it very slowly at first. Okay. okay. But here are the motions. It goes like this. For this, this. is what the Sovereign Lord says. says. I, I myself will search for I'm my sheep. I'm a sheep. I like that. Yeah, sheep. And, but you don't have four horns. Put your hand fingers oh. together. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They only have two ears. Okay. Well, I was kind of a weird sheep. Okay, yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Search for my sheep and look after them. Like a baby. I yeah. like that. Yeah. And that's what? Ezekiel. That's a prophet. Ezekiel 34 4 11. Okay, that works. All right, yeah, I like it. it. I like we'll it. try it one more time, and I great. think you'll have it. Okay, okay, here we go. Okay, we're going to do it real slow, right? Oh, sure, sure, okay. sure. Okay. For, For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. Ezekiel 34, 11. All right, all okay. right, we got, got it. it. Okay, I okay. can do that one. Now, now we're going to go faster. That's what will make it fun. Let's do it a little faster, shall we? Faster, Miss Sure. Lynn. Yeah, I think faster would be good. Okay, here we go. Ready? For this is, this is what, what the, the Sovereign Lord says. I myself I will search, search for the sheep, sheep and look after, after them. them. Ezekiel, Ezekiel 30, 34, 11. 11. There you go. Okay, you did great. Now let's do it faster. 
Faster? Faster. Miss Lynn, I oh, we can do I it. Mean, Come on now. Here we go. Okay. Ready? Here, Here we, we go. go. For this is what, what the Sovereign Lord what? says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. Ezekiel 34, 11. I got it, Miss Lynn. You did. You I did, did it so fast. You didn't catch up with me, but I, I, I really you, did. You were fast. fast. You were fast. It was almost as good as those different songs. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. Okay. Well, thanks. Okay, boys and girls, we've talked about it now. We're going to sing that song that you guys love and I love. It's Reckless Love. So, uh, Miss Doreen, you want to get the computer started for us? Love that song. By Corey Asbury. spoke a word, you were singing over me. That's you, right there. You've been so, so good to me. And it's me, right there. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind. Oh! 
fight for me. I need only be still. That's Exodus 14, 14. Great job, you guys. Isn't that a great song, you guys? I just love that song. But, you know, there's some explanations for what is happening in the song that I think will make it even more powerful. And we went through this one time in Sunday school, but I think it's worth going over again. So this is that same song, but we're not going to play the music this time. We're just going to look at the words. So let's go. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You've been so, so good to me. Now, that's Jesus, and that's me, or that's you, or that's your mom and dad, or your grandma and grandpa, or whoever. Before you were even able to be to talk, you God was talking to you. Let's click on and see. Right over here it says Jeremiah 1:5. And it says, Before I made you in your mother's womb, that's her belly, I knew you. Before you were born, I chose you for a special work. Isn't that cool? Jesus knew you before you were even born. And he had already decided all about you. I just think that is so wonderful. Okay, let's go to the next part. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. And isn't that cool to see Jesus with that little baby up in the clouds before he's being born, maybe telling him, hey, you know, this is what's going to happen. This is who your mom and dad are going to be or whatever. And let's look at Psalm 139, 13 through 16. You formed the way I think and feel. That's Jesus did that. You put me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because you made me in such a wonderful way. I know how amazing that was. You could see my bones grow as my body took shape, hidden in my mother's womb. You could see my body grow each passing day. You listed all my parts and not one of them was missing. And that means he made you just the way he wanted you to be. And, you know, I wish he'd made me a whole lot younger and skinnier and, and all that. But he's allowed me to be who I am because he has a special gift for each and every one of us. And I, he decides that. All right, let's go to the next one. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Reckless means you're not even thinking about what it means. It doesn't matter what could happen to him. He loves you so much. And look at all these people there. All different countries and people from different places. He loves all of us the same. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. And we know what that is because Miss Lynn talked about that. There's those 99 sheep over there just hanging out. But here's that one guy that wasn't following directions and he ran off, and look how he got himself in trouble. But that shepherd is going to save him. And that's what Jesus does for us. He loves us. He chases us down and fights us till he's found us. And he leaves the other ones to get us. I just love that. Okay, next one. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. And if you look, this guy's in chains. He did really bad stuff. And yet, he didn't earn it. He didn't deserve it. But Jesus gave himself for him anyway. Isn't that just so powerful? I just, what a great thing. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. And I just love that, getting a big hug from Jesus. And you know what? This is a little kid, but the Bible says that we're all children, that, that he loves us, and we need to have childlike faith. So that's, that's me, that's you, that's your... Your mom, your dad, your uncle, whoever, that's them. I love that. Okay. Next. Click on here. Oh, and then, of course, we put this one in here. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. That's John 3.16. And, and I just added that in there because I think that's so important because if you forget that, the rest of it doesn't really matter because you have to accept him. You have to believe in him. 
And then you won't perish and you'll have eternal life. You have to believe in him and give your life to him. And I love how that makes a cross. I mean, a heart. Okay, when I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You know what a foe is? That's your enemy. When I was doing everything I could to, to pick on you and bully you and be mean to you, Jesus, still your love fought for me. That's really powerful. You have been so, so good to me. And over here, it's Luke 23, 34. Let's see what that is. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. And you can see, he's on the cross. He's got the nails in his hands. And yet, he was telling God, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And that, he was saying, forgive Miss June. Forgive all of you. They don't understand what they're doing. And that just really makes me happy that he loves me that much. And he loves you that much. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You've been so, so kind to me. And I don't know about you, but there's days when I think, I am just not worth it. And yet, when I felt no worth, he still paid it all for me. He has been so, so kind to me. And this, you know... I have felt like him sometimes, just like, oh, I can't do this anymore. And yet Jesus is there and he's hugging you. Even if you don't see him, he's there. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. And I just love that. Here he is in this, up in the clouds and the, the dove, and Jesus is just hugging you. Isn't that a great thought? I just love that. It's reckless love. He doesn't care. He doesn't care what it means to him. He only cares about us. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, and leaves the 99. And there's that little lamb, the one that ran away and did something bad when everybody else was doing the right thing. But this one little lamb ran off. And just like Miss Lynn's story said, that one little lamb, Jesus left these guys, said, here, take care of my other lambs i got to go find this guy. And that was me he found. And that was you he found. It was all of us. I think that's wonderful. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. And I love that. I love that. He's just hugging that little baby lamb so much. And sometimes I can tell you, I have felt like Jesus was just hugging me like that. And I hope he, you can feel it too. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. And this one, I don't know if you ever noticed, this guy has the hammer in his hand, and he's got the nail that went into Jesus' hand. And, and he's not somebody from the Bible, is he? He's somebody from today. He's one of us. And yet, Jesus is holding him and hugging him, even though he already put the nails in Jesus' hands. And that's what we all do. When we sin, anytime you sin... You put Jesus on the cross, and yet he loves us so much. It's overwhelming, the never-ending, reckless love of God. Man. And I just have to, that, the crown of thorns, and it makes a heart. And I just love that picture. Somebody reading their Bible, and ah, oh, it's wonderful. Okay. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up coming after me. And if you think about that, now... That lamb is on top of a mountain. And yet my mountains aren't like a mountain. My mountain might be that I got myself in trouble or I said something that hurt somebody else's feelings and I didn't mean to or I did something that I shouldn't have. And yet he's going to find it and he's going to light it up and let me give it back to him so that he can climb up and come after me and save me. I love that. There's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me and I see this he's fighting off all the devil's people he doesn't care he's going to knock down that wall where the devil's trying to hold you away from him say no you can't go to Jesus he said yes she can she can come to me and, and any lie that you've said somebody else has said it doesn't matter he can tear it down because he's coming after you and he's going to save you there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up coming after me. And I just look at that picture and, and have you ever been lost? Have you ever been lost in the grocery store or something or in a store with your mom and suddenly you look around and there's nobody there? And it's scary. 
And when you finally get found, you're so happy to see him. Well, that's, that's how I see that picture right there. That little boy was, or little girl, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, really, but whoever they are, they're so happy to be home and not to have to be afraid anymore. Okay. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down coming after me. Now this says Revelation 5.5, 5, and let's see what that is. The lion from the tribe of Judah has won the victory. That's who he is. He's the lion from the tribe of Judah. That's, I mean, you don't want to mess with a lion, do you? No way are you going to fight with a lion. And the devil can't fight with a lion. And that's who Jesus is. He's the lion from the tribe of Judah. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up coming after me. There I am again. Hot, trying to find my own way. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down coming after me. Look at that. That's a scene right out of the scriptures talking about where Jesus is going to come and get us and we're all going to be on white horses and we're going to be in the final battle and we're going to win. And that is such a blessed picture to me. All of us riding with Jesus. There's Jesus in the middle. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up coming after me. Now this one says John 129. Now we already did the lion, didn't we? Let's see what John 129 is. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now I don't know if you noticed, but that other one was from the Old Testament. This is from the New Testament. And some people say, ah, oh, the Old Testament doesn't matter, or the New Testament doesn't matter, but they are put together for a reason. They're all talking about Jesus coming back. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down coming after me. And, you know, sometimes we feel like, oh, well, you know, he's coming after me, but he's not coming after that guy because he's dirty or he's not something. But... He's coming after everybody. So if you see somebody and you think, oh, Jesus wouldn't care about him, you think about that. Because he's no different than you are. And Jesus loves him just as much. Well, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. And I love this. There's Jesus, and he's got his angel watching over him. Let's look at Luke 4.10. For the scripture says, he will order his angels to protect and guard you. So Jesus is with you, but he also has angels to protect and guard you. I mean, what more can we ask? See why I like this song? This is a really cool song. Okay. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99, and there's that little lamb again. I'm so glad Miss Lynn told that story, because that really comes up a lot in this song, doesn't it? I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. That little lamb didn't do anything, right? In fact, he did the wrong thing. He ran away from everybody else, and yet Jesus saved him, just like that shepherd. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. And all these guys are just coming to Jesus saying, Please, can you save me? Can you save me? Can you save me? Just like you can. And this is that picture I was showing you with the... The devil's angels, it's in Revelation 20.10, and the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire. That's what's going to happen. Jesus is going to defeat the devil, and he's going to throw him into a lake of fire forever and ever, and he'll never get loose. In Thess 1 Thessalonians 4.16, if you look at all these kids, let's see what 1 Thessalonians 4.16 for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And we shall, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. So all those people, can, can you go back to that screen before that? All of these kids, all of them, they're all different countries, all different races, all different colors, skin colors, and yet Jesus sees us all exactly the like. We're his children. He loves us. Okay? And then one more. And you guys know at the end we always read this. Satan may roar, but my defender is the Lion of Judah, and he will fight for me. 
I need only be still. Wow, isn't that a great song? You know what? I think we should sing it again. Now that you know all these words, let's go back and let's sing it again. And I want you to think about all those words as we're singing it. Let's sing it one more time now. Self away. 